This here theme park has to be one of the most visually incredible theme parks ever featured on this channel after over 260 something episodes of Park Spotlight. This park puts a whole new meaning on theme parks. The actual theming of this park is over the top, full of personality, tons of characteristics, and tons of exaggeration. The compositions are like nothing I've ever seen before. The color palette pops like never before. And the park layout and coasters look absolutely sensational. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a treat here today with one of the highest quality park experiences you will ever witness. So join me as we take a tour through Luna Lake. Let's go. Hey, oh my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today, we're gonna be looking at Luna Lake Amusement Park, created by the one and only legend of this community, Mr. Vanderpants. And here they say, Hey, oh Johnny, and welcome to Luna Lake Amusement Park, a family theme park themed after various aspects of Europe. Like various locations, time periods, folklore and music, the park contains eight coasters, four track rides, and plenty of flat rides. So there is something for everyone to enjoy. Some practical information, I've used a handful of custom images and music in this park. The latter should be royalty free, but you have some doubts about the music, you can always give us your best Euro beat impression yourself. All rides and signs have been indicating the preferred seating position and have been connected to day night sequencers. The park has some nighttime lighting but would recommend exploring it during the day thanks for checking out my park and i hope you enjoy it okay uh when i did open up the park it said like you were missing some files there are no files to download on the steam page as well as no files sent to me in the email submission so we don't have the files that you spoke of and they are nowhere to be found i have triple checked so um <clears throat> i will have to give you my best euro beat impressions <laughs> whatever that means Needs. All right, this looks like a ton of fun. I am super excited about today's theme park. So why don't we get right on into it? Ladies and gentlemen, look at this beautiful parking lot. Love all the uh, foliage work here, all the planters. I uh, The park originally had 2,000 guests in the park and I wanted to crank it up a little bit. Let's bring it up to 4,000. So we're gonna move with the herd of Sims, Planconians as some might say. Luna Lake. I gotta say, this is one of the most gorgeous popping park fonts I have ever seen. The subtle hue between the cherry and the cherry pink, I guess? Hot pink and white is incredible. Right on a beautiful plaza area and that of a, an amazing park entrance. Wow, it has been a hot minute since I've seen a park entrance this vibrant, this enticing, this exciting. Great job, Mr. Vanderpants. Is the volume too loud? Volume might be too loud. I might have to fix it in post. We'll see if I can hear myself while I'm editing. <laughs> oh, look at this. Wow. TMTK, we got wheelchairs and little uh, carriages for the babies, the young ones. I have never seen that before. I, I, I feel like I say this like every dozen or so it's a photo spot. Is that what this is for? You sure it's not a security camera? Um, I feel like I say it every dozen episodes or so. That is something I've never seen in Planet Coaster before. And it's true. Almost uh, every 10 or so videos, you guys surprise me with something I have never seen. Even if it's something as simple as a, a baby walker or a wheelchair. I still get impressed when I see new stuff. Wow. This is the attention of detail that I love to see in Park Spotlights. Mr. Vanderpants going the distance to fully decorate an interior for their restaurant. This is the type of stuff you see, the level of detail that you see from our contest shop contests, if not even elevated slightly. Uh, again, like all the custom, everything in this park is custom, down to each roof tile. And I think the composition, the way it looks, look at that. Some of the best looking Main Street buildings I have ever seen. 
And I, I'm gonna be saying that about a lot of things in this park because there are so many wow factors that this park has. Even the choice of pink. I don't know what it is. The pink on green with the pink walkway and all the foliage behind it and then pop. Cherry pink Luna Lake Ferris wheel. Like, come on. Everything about this par park has a pop to it. It takes theming and elevates it. Takes design and elevates it. It's super fun, super creative, playful, and gorgeous. Absolutely stunning work here from Mr. Vanderpants. We got the, like, uh, little buoy things to, uh, I guess people could swim in the lake, but they're not allowed to go past here. That's kind of neat. Should have put some animatronics in the water. Ooh, look at the little Street Fox coffee shop. The music is really loud. I'm wondering if I should turn the volume down. But it should get quieter as we get away from these speakers. But as I walk further, there's just speakers everywhere. What is up with the little eggs? What is your obsession with Jemmy eggs? It's adorable. I think this is the first time I've seen somebody really embrace pink without going like cosmic cow pink. Oh, maybe not everyone understands that reference, but uh, I guess I could show it off here. Staff, here's the cosmic cow. I'll just place it down. Yes. Oftentimes when people get inspired by pink and blue in this game, it becomes very cosmic cowy. But I'm seeing the pink and the blue done in a new way that is refreshing. And it's, uh, I want to say bold. It's very bold, but it's also um, soft. It's a very pastel. But I think it's like a bold choice, is what I mean, right? I mean, uh, to, to make pink work and make it work well, takes some effort. And I think, uh, you pulled that off with gleaming reviews. Absolutely. This is insanity. I love that plaza area, and look, as we're transitioning from Luna Link Pink Land, <laughs> and there's a, a clear divide from the change of pathways and even the archway dividing it. We're going into what appears to be some sort of like Viking style village. And again, taking those colors and just accentuating them. We got these strong teals with custom woodwork. Everything here custom again. Not buildings you could just plop down out of the box. These are kit bashed together with incredible accuracy. Ah, still incorporating a little bit of that pink. Love to see it. And we got some realism back here too. Some gates where the uh, trucks come in to bring supplies to and fro. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. I didn't have reshade on. I didn't have reshade on. This park would have looked even better. All right, time to throw out the recording and restart. <laughs> no way. Oh, uh, wowzers. So we got, look, a uh, appears to be an Intamin Blitz-style coaster over here. Looking fantastic. Let's go. So they did say there's, like, preferred seats, or row one, seat two, so they kind of want us to sit right here. And uh, look at this boarding station. I like the window viewing. Everything's very angled. We have multiple cascading windows. Very cool design on all of this stuff. Wow. The uh, park spotlight that we did yesterday, I was giving compliments about how good the boarding stations are. And here we go again. A repeat of yesterday, and I uh, am thrilled to see it, you guys. Uh, the Dragon Jagger? I don't even know how to say that. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the stats. Almost a kilometer in length here. We got four air times on this guy. Biggest drop is 24 meters, which is quite large for like a blitz style coaster. And we're going 60 miles an hour. Uh, they wanted to go seat two, row one. Reshade back on. Let's go.
Wow, that is sensational. I um I really prefer to ride these blitz style coasters in the track view. So what I may offer you guys here is a look at it at night, which appears to have some lighting. They said that they preferred us to walk around the park at daytime. But if the coasters have lighting and we could check out the coaster in a new perspective, I embrace it. So let's uh let's do that. Why not? Absolutely incredible. Mr. Vanderpants, a great experience both day and night. An absolutely sensational coaster layout on that. Wow, an impeccable experience. And if that is just the first coaster of the park of what they said, eight roller coasters, four track rides. And guys, I you might have saw it in the B-roll, but I get excited when people do go-karts really, really well. And Mjolnir's Strike, and it's a big swimming, what's this thing called, the Hammer Fist? Oh, you named it, Mjolnir's Strike. Nice, nice, nice. Some people forget to name the rides. It's a small little touch that I quite like. Even um, the landscaping, look at this. Just the attention to detail of like, I'm gonna round off the edges and then put some woodwork trim around that. Uh, <laughs> it's such a simple thing, but that's what makes this park pop. These subtle details um, in and around everywhere that you look, where you kind of like, you look at this park and you go, there's an interesting aesthetic about all of this that uh, I don't under quite understand why it looks so unique compared to the rest. And these are the things, like just the layering of the cobblestone here, the trim work, the rounding of the edges, the vibrant colors, and it really makes it pop. But I had a previous thought. I kind of got distracted by that uh, mound. I get really excited when I see go-karts that are done well. And there was a shot of the go-karts. And from what I've seen, um, <laughs> they have elevated it beyond anything I've ever seen. But there's a giant facility, a whole realism facility, all indoor, built for that of the go-karts. So... I have rarely ever seen indoor go-karts. Look at this shot. Is it not picturesque? These vistas. And I love the fact that you're like, oh, photo spot. Get out your selfie. Get out your cam. Do a little selfie here. And uh, yeah, that's captivating. A waterfall, this smoky, like dwarven structure. I guess uh, not dwarven, but like um, Valhalla, Viking. It's incredible. So while the um, the Viking area was short and sweet, a pass through with a coaster, it's incredibly well detailed. And I like that, that we're not like overwhelming ourselves and getting bored of the themes. We're just getting a taste of everything. And now we're passing into, wh what is this? Fantasy witch? Something, something like that. A little playground, we got some teeter totters, uh, a little uh, slide here. A doghouse. <laughs> the kids go in there, climb the tower, and uh, go down the slide. I feel this would be one of the more captivating areas at night. It is pretty loud. I am going to turn down the volume so I don't have to, like, constantly change things in post. There we go. It's hard to hear myself think. Entrance to the Wyvern Wings which uh, I don't think is the flat ride, or could be. I feel like this is gonna be a dark ride, one of the track rides, if I were to make a guess. Left side or right side? No, I was gonna say it's dueling, but this has been cut off, which has me curious to see where the cut off cue takes us, because the guests actually can't come up here. 
Oh, that's just a touch of realism. So because it's a winged launch coaster, they, they need the guests to be able to get on both sides of the wings. So they manually built that because the game does not accommodate for that. Wow, <laughs> oh, that level of detail. Uh, preferred seating, row one, seat one, indoor, look around. Let's uh, pause it, take a look. These are the rides results, a kilometer length as well for inversions, max speeds of six, uh, 59 miles per hour, and the biggest drop is 21 meters. We're gonna go row one, seat one, and look around. We're gonna do nighttime to start things off, and off we go. We'll do daytime as well. Or can, should I look around? I don't know. We'll see. Wait, did I? Did I get on the right? One? That seemed awfully short. That wasn't a kilometer in length. Maybe maybe what I thought was the uh, the correct coaster was not. Let's try this again, but at daytime. And uh, I'm gonna go into... Yeah, something went wrong there. It's like I saw it taking off and I got on the wrong coaster, maybe? Let's try this again. And we're gonna go on the opposite side of the wing. Yeah, it looks different already, right? It looks like they used a day-night sequencer, so it's nighttime when it's supposed to be nighttime. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. There we go. There's multiple interior sections to this ride, so I guess when I got on it, we were in a different area that looked like this, which had me kind of confused or tricked me. Wow, I love this terrain. Like these uh, broken clay stones kind of crumbling apart and just the way it, again, like the pop, right? Using the paint, the paint has been done so well here. And then you outline it with uh, the kind of opposite contrasting colors to really make things vibrant. This is like next level color theory, right? And then the sandy shores, the hard rocks and the green in the background, waterfall off to the side. All of these things are lending aid to the composition and the color pop, right? This would blend in a lot more had we not have the, uh, the diff the differing tones and those tones really make things stand out this is a uh, outstanding terrain work and i love how you 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 built it all into the uh the 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 buildings like this to still make it look like a set that's been built in a theme park it's not like natural terrain it's man-made terrain but it's built to look natural and that's where it's like that is just theme park elevation to uh to the next level um outstanding stuff absolutely outstanding stuff wow i am getting giddy you guys park spotlight is back uh if you're enjoying the park so far please do leave a like it takes a second and it helps the video a lot also drop a comment let me know what you guys think of this park and uh, be sure to tune in because I am definitely bringing par Park Spotlight back with a vengeance. We're going to be doing a minimum of two a week here, if not three, uh, as I have a huge lineup. It was hard to pick um, out of nowhere. I mean, you take a break from Park Spotlights for a minute and uh, they the new ones start rolling in. Yes, this is a very active community. It's a very, oh, I guess this is the exit to the ride we went on. I didn't quite leave the proper, oh wait. Ooh. 
It's not. Oh, ho, ho. what I just got a glimpse of there was a shooting ride. But yes, there's a very active community and these parks are still being made and sent in on a weekly to monthly basis. There's been no shortage. I mean, look at this, you guys. This, um... This is gonna be park of the year. Not That's not saying much, because I've made a couple park spotlights so far for 2024. But this is the one to beat. Like, this is gonna be the reigning champion of 2024 until something better comes along. And I, I we haven't even explored 10% of it yet. Wow. Yeah, this is the one to beat for me. Um, there's so many things done right here. And what would be right here is nighttime. I see some dark black uh, ceilings. Okay, we have a shooting ride. Wow. Shooting rides can be a big hit or miss. Look at the uh, little booth. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, they can be a hit or a miss. So I don't know what to expect from this. My expectations are kind of low. Start shooting ride. My expectations are low only because <laughs> very rarely am I impressed by a shooting ride. Either they're full of targets and it's like, shoot the targets, bang, 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 bang. Or they're like cinematic experiences, but it's generally the latter. So we'll, we'll have to see. I think I got to turn reshade off. No doesn't seem to really affect much in here. Oh, there's a target. Okay. The scenes so far are really great. So it does seem to be a little bit more on the target target side. And what I mean by that is there are, can I shoot these or do I have to wait till they light up? Oh, look at that. That's a bit of a new feature, I think. Or at least uh, the atmosphere is making it feel a little bit different than what I'm used to. So if you're gonna go with just the targets, Um, the way Mr. Vanderpants has made them stand out here is quite interesting. Can we shoot these lights? So, it is a standard, like, <clears throat> so I was gonna say, like, you can make animatronics, and you can shoot, like, monsters, and you can shoot krakens, and you can put the targets in things where cause explosions. Um, this is a, more of a, a standard, like, Hit the targets, get a high score kind of game. Haven't seen a whole lot going on with the animatronics. We saw a person fall out of the window there. Bit of a shootout here. But see, that happens automatically whether or not I shoot the target. Some people set them so that if you shoot the target, then the shootout occurs. However, the scenes are incredible. The scenes were incredibly well done. Lots of, uh, yeah, like the atmospheres are really, really phenomenal. I'm, I'm digging the immersion factor here. This is really, really cool. So I think this is like the standard target kind of shooting ride elevated. So I'm not mad at this at all. This is actually way more impressive than I was hoping it would be. Wow. Ooh, okay, these ones all did something fun. I like that. These indoor pirate experiences, uh, we went to, uh, Marty Land yesterday. Oh, I didn't check my high score. That's okay. Uh, we went to Marty Land yesterday, and they did one of the best Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, boat dark rides I have ever seen. And this, uh, kind of reminds me of that. So if you guys didn't see the spotlight from yesterday, be sure to go check that out, because it was just phenomenal as well. And <clears throat> I think these, uh, indoor pirate experiences are some of the best dark rides that you can experience in Planet Coaster. Uh, this is where we went in, right? The Pirates and Pistols was what it was called. I didn't even check the, the signage on that. This is a, a fantastic little spin on Pirate. Still has this, like, Main Street, you know, building-age vibe to it with a touch of Pirate. It's not, like, over-Pirate-ified, but it's, uh, clean. Very, very clean. Let's go check out the Flying Dutchman. Everywhere I turn, there's an exciting viewpoint, uh, vibrant colors, and just exciting looking coasters. This is how you do it, guys. I hope a lot of people are getting inspired by Mr. Vanderpants, and uh, yeah, you knocked it out of the park quite literally. Oh, look at the splash down there, running around the lake. Again, what did I just say? Everywhere I look. Wow. I like the little glass windows here. 
great boarding stations yet again. Preferred seat, row one, seat one. It is a, uh, I'm not gonna do the preferred seat. Maybe we'll do it at nighttime, the preferred seat. I really like riding single rail coasters on the rail, um, track view. So, and again, all the coasters seem to be about one kilometer in length equivocally. Yeah, four inversions on this, uh, 40 meters is the biggest drop. I think that's the biggest drop out of all the coasters so far. And 66 miles per hour, we would also make it the fastest coaster so far. Nothing too extreme <clears throat> in terms of like video gamifying things. Everything's been more, more on the realistic side of the scope. All right, let's check this out. Wow, some pretty uh, amazing views of the park from the top of that lift and uh, inversions there. Do we have any nighttime lighting on this? We've got a little bit. So why don't we do the uh, preferred seating that the creator has requested for us? Row one, seat one. That's this one. Let's go. Wow, again, incredible landscape uh, work on this coaster. I'm curious to know, are these supports custom? No, they're not. Some of them looked as if they were. It's just really uh, well integrated. Wow, again, this is not just like coaster plopped off to the side Six Flags style. I mean, look at the integration, the way it comes around to this kind of like cove beachy area, the drop down here, it weaves in, uh, bobs around the actual boarding station goes underneath the bridge the crossover for the queue and the exit there uh splashdown moment on the lake and again these attention to detail i just love the runoff of the cobblestones down gradient into the lake there it just gives it like a really nice uh tonal color to it this is just next level artwork i feel like this is uh <clears throat> It's just picturesque, right? This is just phenomenal. The only person, I, there's like a style to this that is uh, very hard to replicate and it kind of gives me Rai Rai vibes, but different. And that's like a massive compliment as uh, if you guys are mega fans of the show, you would have heard of Thunderland Valley. It's such a good park. I had to refeature it in 4K with Reshade uh, a, a year later. A very fan favorite theme park. And it has a lot of the um, kind of designs that uh, Mr. Vanderpants has embraced here, but I think Mr. Vanderpants has uh, come up with their own style. And I just think the two creators need to get together and make a park now because there are similarities. Both of them know how to accentuate, to bring out characteristics. This here shot, the speaker phones, the music notes, the speakers, the, uh, what are these? Oh, that's a boom box too, or a subwoofer, I guess. All of these like music-y things. And it almost has like the pinkish look to it almost looks like uh, organs or um, what, do, and what do I want to say like intestines. It's like the music is alive, if that makes sense. And uh, I love that. And the go-karts are wrapping through it. That level of detail is just incredible. And it's all attached to the DJ booth 
here. So there's a concert, but then that music would be uh, played while you're on the go-karts. I would have loved to hear what that royalty-free music was uh, that they did not l provide to us, which has me a little bit uh, sad. But those are the go-karts that I was hyping up earlier. I'm really excited to see what those are all about. Looks like we have a Giga Coaster or something up here, although it's using a different style of track. Um, which is normally used for, like, an Intamin Blitz, I think? Huh. Let's check it out. Yeah, I'm super stoked about the go-karts. It's rare that, um, we get really good ones. And seeing how I said... I set the bar kind of low for the shooting ride, and I came out really quite impressed by it. My, uh... <laughs> I'm going to be doing the opposite for the go-karts. I'm setting the bar really high and hoping for the best. So the preferred seats are row one, seat two. This is the Colossus, and it is a Typhoon Infinite, but built into a bit of a, a Giga Coaster of sorts. Love all the uh, maintenance sheds here, the transfer tracks ready to go. Look at all of this. This is incredible. So this one we're looking at almost two kilometers in length. 61 meters is the biggest drop. The last one was what, 66 meters, right? So um, not quite the heights I was looking for on this, but uh, 80 miles per hour. So definitely the fastest coaster and with eight airtime counts and six seconds of airtime, definitely the coaster that is going to make us cruise and get the most airtime. So that's uh, something setting it apart from the rest. Let's do the preferred seat for this guy and check it out. Wow. Stunning visuals already. I uh, can't wait to get a look at the park from the lift hill here. Look at that. So from the looks of things, we haven't even made it halfway around the lake and this looks like the bigger half of the park. Looking at my recording, we're about 36 minutes in and we're not even halfway done yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in for a treat here today. Let's go. You asked for my, uh... <laughs> what did they say? My Eurobeat impression. But there, now, now, but there, now, now. That's all you're getting from me. This park, you guys, I'm in love with it. Let's see if we got any nighttime lighting. I definitely want to check out the track view on this coaster. It'd be definitely pretty difficult to light this, but the way the moonlight's kind of hitting that steel top there is pretty nice, so let's do it. I went into this park going like, oh, from a bird's eye view, this appears to be um, one of the most thematically intriguing parks I've ever seen. But the more we look around, there's like elements of realism everywhere. It's over the top realistic and over the top thematic. This is like a Disney experience on steroids. I love it.
Wow. Incredible. Look at the hot pinks over there to finish things off. Mr. Vanderpants is in love with the pink, and uh, I am a fan myself. Wow. I uh, We got to find a way to get onto these go-karts. What's going on here? Oh, wow. You fed the uh, exit right back into the entrance. Let's just wrap back around and go on it again. Would you look at that? I got confused. This is the entrance to the coaster we went on. The Colossus. This is the entrance to the go-karts. I got a little mix up coming out here, but I guess uh, having a sign for the go-karts there would have been a little bit more indicative. But uh, yeah, here it is. Wow. <laughs> you are uh, not afraid to use color and I love it. The yellow on black with pink is such a bold choice and it works. It works so freaking well oh my goodness gracious you guys look at this i was gonna say this almost looked like a record hanging from the roof that would have been a great little uh if you would have actually built a record here that would have been sick you got this whole music theme going on here speaking of which do we have any uh music so i'm, I'm assuming there was supposed to be some music uh i don't know what like the best euro uh what do they call it euro beat music is there is a song that I'm thinking of that would work really, really well for this, but I can't remember what it's called. And there's so many songs in this freaking game and everybody's loading up here. Let's do a uh, planet euphoria. That sounds kind of like Euro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, they're taking off here. Let's uh, I'm going to actually just like chill in the seat view and have a look around. Let's do that. So it's automatically set to nighttime. So that is the intention. Ugh. We can actually manually erase these, but I want to appreciate looking around. I can't drive and look around. I mean, I could try, but I don't know how well. Ooh, look at the big microphone there. That is a sick design there. I wonder how many pieces that took to build. Wow. Wow, freaking we. I had high hopes for the go-karts and they absolutely delivered. The uh, big thing there, the centerpiece thing that I was gawking over earlier, um, it's so beautiful. I'm, it's almost a shame that we're not coming from the other direction because you pass it with your back face to it and you can't really see it, but that's okay. Still looks captivating on your way to the go-karts. You just don't get a look at it while you're on the go-karts. But yeah, this is um, a very... Something I feel like you would see... It's a good circuit. Like something right out of a, a Nintendo game. You know? Like a Mario Kart. Just these uh, really crazy tracks. It's very up and down. Lots of bridges, passways. Uh, lots of details. Um, thematic things to look at. I love the fact that it's majority indoor and what you did with the interior is phenomenal. Keep forgetting to turn reshade on too. Ah, it's been a hot minute since I recorded these. Uh, forgive me guys. I am a little bit forgetful in terms of uh, I've lost my, um, what do you call it? Autopilot. Wow. Yep. The go-karts absolutely delivered as I hope that they would. I love it. Let's just keep on keeping on. We're gonna do a little bit of zoomy zooms because yeah, we passed through this part of the park already. Um, that's a cue for the air balloons there. Nice little sign out front as well. Got a matching color theme with the uh, coaster there behind it. Another cute little coffee shop here. Great uh, use of the uh, icing. This is normally used on gingerbread for the Christmas decor and you use it as a, a nice little elegant um, trim on that building. Wow, look at the style we got going on over here. <clears throat> Cute little uh, boutique here. Wow. Mr. Vanderpants uh, really everywhere. You know, it's like, what can I fault in this park? And, uh, you know, it's like, even down to the interiors of the shops, just the micro details. Something that most people go, ah, you know, we'll put the shop in there. Nobody's really going to go in there. They're more, more uh, 
focused on going on the coasters. But, uh, yeah, like, usually just see stuff like this, right? Just put a shop down so the guests have their needs met. Um, I really like the pathways as well. You have this kind of cobblestone thing leading us through. Just, like, really crazy with the design work. It looks incredible. So it's like, path work's amazing. Edging of the paths, like the cobblestone there and like the lining of the uh, hilltops. Just like the outskirts of things, of the scenery, just elevated. Path work elevated, shops elevated, coasters elevated, boarding stations. Like the list goes on and on and on and on to a point where I can't find a fault with this park. I can't find something that I, I, I would, you know, see to be improved. Now I will say that when I first opened up the park, in the grand scope of things, it wasn't like this gigantic end-to-end, -end, laggy, massive mega park that we've come to expect from a lot of these over the years. But that's not really a fault. It's not a critique either. It's just, it is what it is. And I was like, okay, like, this might not be um, one of these crazy two-hour episodes. But as we're walking around, as we're looking at things deep closer, it's a quality versus quantity thing, and the quantity is just perfect. As a result, we have 4,000 guests in the park. It's bustling. It's a butter smooth 50 to 55 frames per second. Uh, there's no shortage of content either. So, like, uh, the one thing that I could say is, like, maybe there could be more, but I don't think that it's necessary at all. So it looks like we either have a dueling coaster here or just two coasters, the Fairy Flight and the Gladiator. They're very contrasting names. Is the Gladiator fighting a fairy? <laughs> I like how everyone's just like packed into this hedge maze. Oh my God, it's claustrophobic in here. Okay. Oh, the Gladiator is a flat ride in a Coliseo. Wow, that is quite nice. Again, if we're gonna be talking about things just done right, flat rides, are not just plopped down. Look at the integration, look at the theming, look at the queue design, uh, even just the exit. Passing over, photo spot, waterfall, river, uh, beautiful garden work. This is just stunning. All of that for a flat ride. I mean, uh, so that, again, like, can't, can't say, oh, you could have done a little bit of better job on the flat rides. And even if the flat rides were underwhelming, I would not have critiqued that because it's just pretty common for people to, just tuck a flat ride in and put a few flowers around it. But I do want to give credit where credit is due, because when somebody integrates a flat ride really, really nicely, it is uh, notable. So the Fairy Flight, here we go. It is a spinning spiral coaster, 400 meters in duration. Not a whole lot going on here, but we're going to go row one, seat one as requested. Let's do it. Off we go. Yeah, some of these coasters are missing music, and I think they were intended to have music, but because the link wasn't provided to us, we're not really getting what was intended. So, the boarding stations themselves do have music, though, and I guess, like, looking for things to critique would be the ambience, but the ambience have been great, and where it's missing, I think it was intended to be there. So, again, nothing to fault anywhere. <laughs> anywhere in this park. Wow. And as I was talking about, like, the sheer size, like, I, I think I'm good on riding this one at night. Well, it's not an end-to-end -end mega park with a gajillion pieces, I, I don't think it's feasible to make this park any bigger than what it is. And I don't, uh, not only because it's, like, the attention to detail is so vast that amplifying that further is just, this probably already took a long time to make this park. It would be greedy to ask for more. And so, it, like, again, I want to just emphasize that it was not a critique by saying, you know, it's not the biggest park I've ever seen, but it's quality over quantity. So it, it still it is, again, a compliment. It's just not feasible to make this any bigger because of the attention to detail throughout 
the park. It makes it very, very vast in terms of its um, visual aesthetic. So we have a fun little car ride here. And honestly, I think it'll be a good one. So we're gonna, do I wanna do this view? Oh my God, this is adorable. <laughs> it looks so good. Wow. Oh my God, it's so cozy. I love this little gazebo. Again, like all the tiles gone into that. And like, again, with the icing and the woodwork and like that, that's like a, probably like 150 pieces right there to make that little gazebo. Um, unless you've played Planet Coaster yourself and actually constructed some of this stuff, it's some, it's kind of hard to appreciate how good this park is. I mean, you, if you're impressed by just looking at it and you haven't played the game, then that, that speaks, uh, miles. It speaks for itself, right? But I think anyone that has any experience playing this game is probably just losing their minds like I am. Uh, because, yeah, this is uh, just ridiculous. Even this little building here, hundreds of pieces to construct that. And there's so many little pieces gone into it to make it pop. Uh, the garden work here is just beautiful. It's really well thought out. It's not just, like, I'll be honest, when I do garden work, I just spam stuff with no rhyme or reason and now that i see this i'm like oh there's like a correct way to do this <laughs> and i'm not doing it the correct way <laughs> this looks so good yeah there i i hope a lot of people get inspired by this park because for me it's one of the most inspirational parks i have ever seen on the 600 plus episodes of uh doing this show um i'm blown away Absolutely blown away. I want to see when this was submitted. The end of September going into October. It's been sitting in the bin for four months, you guys. But to be fair, I didn't feature... Uh, this, it's been sitting in my to-do list since December. So it was only... Uh, I pulled it out when it was only like a month or two old. And then I kind of like, I got really focused on the project that we're working on, Project Planko, building our own theme park and uh, started dealing with crashes and all sorts of nightmare issues. And so I didn't, uh, I didn't really get around to doing much park spotlights. And that is because um, when I have everything loaded up for our park, it'll lag out other people's parks. I have to like clear out my data files if I want to feature other people's content. And what I mean by that, like if I go to um, these menus, these toolkit items, there's millions of them from our park. They actually lag out the game. If I'm working on the park, I like literally, I have to commit to it. And that has been my biggest commitment of this year so far, just getting that done. But I got it to like 99%, 95%, somewhere around there. And I'm just leaving it chill for a minute. Um, Project Plank goes on hold for a while because you know what? I'm just really itching to see some of these parks and I know you guys are. I don't want to leave you guys hanging for too long. We have a good solid lineup as you can see here today. <laughs> Look at this viewpoint. It's like something out of a fairy tale. Wow. Are these custom supports? They are. 2,200 custom supports selected in this one selection group alone. There could possibly be more. That means this creator has hand placed thousands of wooden boards for a wooden coaster. You don't understand my level of appreciation for that. Look at the nets here. Woo! Ripping and roaring underneath us. Let's go. Another super quaint boarding station here. Let's pass over and take a look around. Look how intricate the coaster track is on this. Very high lift on that. Two people riding it. <laughs> that guy's got his arms up. Let's go. <laughs> Love it. That was great. All right. Almost a kilometer in length. A little bit shorter than I anticipated, but has some good air time on it. It's going up to almost 60 miles per hour. Got some pretty heavy Gs on there as well. Let's go. Green across the board, you guys. What was the preferred seating on this guy? Row one, seat one. I definitely feel like uh, I want to ride the back of the train. How many people do we got going on this thing, first of all? Ooh. Can we get it full? We're gonna ride it twice. Um, they do flail a lot. So I'm gonna kind of like ride in the middle here. Yeah, not at the back. I wanna see the people putting their arms up. Look at this girl's hair. That's adorable. Um, I wanna see their arms flailing about without them flailing in our face. Let's go.
And now what I will do is I will purposely close the ride and we'll delete the exit. I don't even know how you would do that on this. Where is the exit? I can't find it. Oh, here? It doesn't want to uh, select it. Hmm. Oh no, it would be the queue. The thing is they, they got to walk back. Oh, the coaster's taken off. It doesn't even matter anymore. Usually it takes a long while before it gets going again. But this is going to allow us to um, sit in the intended seat without the arms flailing in our face. Let's go. Great. I would have loved a little bit more length on that. Like I said, that's me being greedy, <laughs> but still a wonderful coaster layout there. Um, passing under the bridges, the exit ways. I mean, look at how intricate it is. So I can't really ask for more. I just love, uh, I just want the wooden coasters to never end. They're great experiences overall. I personally really enjoy them, um, but like custom, uh, custom supports make this a uh, quite an endeavor and you're doing it right here today mr vanderpants very 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 good wooden coaster there and again the uh the scenery is really captivating okay let's keep on keep it on you guys you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna open up this coaster back to the the guests we want to see if if we see the coaster in the background i want to see it full of people oh yeah we get more uh Little uh, strollers there. What's going on with this thing? So many unique buildings. I didn't even notice this bell tower. That's really nice too. Was the coaster called the Falcon? It was. I'm not, I'm so uh, immersed and like into it right now. I'm not even reading the signs. I'm just like, whoa, what are my eyes seeing here? Very, very cool. The chair swing on the lake side. I kind of want to just jump on that. Wow. Wow. Hey, it's the same girl that was on the coaster with us. <laughs> She's going on the rides in the same order as us. That is hilarious. That is her, right? She had a green shirt and this little... Uh, I don't even know what you call that hairstyle. It's hilarious. The Mickey. <laughs> the Mickey hair. Yeah, this is fantastic. So gorgeous. There, uh, there's a level of saturation to this park. I have to see, is there a camera preset on this? Let me see here. It doesn't look like they used any effects. They just locked the time of day to 1 p.m. They really thought that that was uh, the best lighting for this park, and I absolutely agree with it. Sometimes, like, just changing the time of day on a park. I've gone into parks, and I'm like, this doesn't look very good, and then I go to, like, 1 p.m. or, like, 10 a.m. I'm like, whoa, this is the best-looking park I've ever seen. Just the way that you can, you know, direct the sun on certain elements of your park can really make the difference. Um, but what I was saying is that there's something extra vibrant about this park. It almost gives me like Park Beyond vibes. It doesn't really look as planet coastery as I've come to expect. It has like a little extra hit of saturation, but there has been actually no changes to the camera effects. It's simply the um, the color palette. And like I said earlier that Mr. Vanderpants is not afraid to use colors in a bold way. So we have a um, Professor Worst Oktoberfest Brewer Brewery for a boarding station for her river rapids. Are you guys ready to go on the uh, lazy beer river? Bar beer garden. Splash pad. It's the beer garden splash pad. Look at all the, you can just see the amount of detail that go goes into making these uh, pathways. Like that's like 18 basic shapes. Wait, is this the river rapids? What, is this just a cool little chill area? For some reason, I thought this was a, um, a river rapids. It's kind of like this style of the station that I would come to expect where it wraps around it. I feel misled and extremely disappointed. <laughs> I wanted to go on the beer lazy river. Nonetheless, this is a, a remarkable 
place to come and get a beer and chill out. I love this giant keg design. And uh, the German World's Fair music. Beautiful. Look at the windmill around the teacups. Anyone's wondering, the teacups itself is what's highlighted. And you can even see the original teacup hidden inside. But what they've decided to do is uh, build this 500 piece intricate windmill over top of it just to match the aesthetic of this little mini German area. Very, very nice. We got this uh, Alpine Bavarian area going on over here. The uh, swimming salmon. Wow. Oh, this is a... Uh... This is one of the earliest buildings we, uh, embarked on. I really hope the experience isn't over. <laughs> Exit only. I know we haven't been on that. I like this little, uh, miniature alpine mountain. This is adorable. Avalanche. I'm super sad that there wasn't a lazy river, and I could have sworn there- I- I have- What are you doing? Lady, you're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> um, She's trying to get a look at the beer garden. Is there beer over there? Yes, yes there is. Um... <laughs> I could have sworn when I was doing the B-roll I saw a River Rapids. I'm gonna look for one from a bird's eye view after this. Avalanche! And, uh, what do we got going on here? It's like the wooden mouse coaster. Fun little, uh, family-friendly ride here. I think we're gonna have to pop up, maybe? Seat view seems a little low, doesn't it? Now, this is kind of fun. Let's check it out like this. Put the reshade back on and off we go. Wow, freaking wee! That is super fun. I love the set. The set design for this coaster is just awesome. Super cozy, super quaint. Let's take a look around. Is there not a River Rapids in this? See, there is. I thought it would be over by the beer garden. Mm-hmm. How did I miss the entrance on this one? So there's this kind of like back area here. Did I come through here? It's tucked away. Super cozy back here. Quite like the look of all this. But see what I was saying about like the uh, the kind of the integration here? I could have seen the beer keg kind of like placed in the center of this with the lazy river going around it. That would have been a great spot to have the uh, lazy river. But I do love the aesthetic of this area as much. So this should be quite an enjoyable lazy river. Not often that I say that, but when it's done well, I definitely, definitely love a good lazy river um, when, when it's done well. And I... You know, my expectations have been blown away around every corner of this experience here today. So, uh, <laughs> wow, look at these. Hanging planters. I like the kind of like bathroom tile. I don't know what's up with that, but I like it. It really works well here. Um, I don't know if you want to see the stats. There they are. Uh, let's make sure we get on the right one this time. Here we go. This one's going up. And I think the best way to experience this is where I can pivot around the center. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the uh, custom lift work. Very nicely done there. Um, while this is part of the River Rapids, this wooden trim here, it's uh, colored in such a way where it looks custom. And the way you've painted and, and done the rock work and foliage right up to the edge work of it really makes it pop. Like we've seen everywhere in this park, uh, very bold contrasts, and it's nice to see that well integrated in the Lazy River, like the clay bed here, holding us in. Incredibly well done. Ooh. Again, it's just a simple, clean, rolling hill, looking nice. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
beautiful aesthetics here. Wow, what an incredible experience here today, you guys. I love it. I'd love to see it. Mr. Vanderpants. Um, they've participated in many contests over the years. They've participated in the park that we're working on. I definitely recognize the name Mr. Vanderpants time and time again. Oh, they did the Tiki Cheeky entrance for our Project Planko Park that we're working on. Uh, the Tiki Twister. What is this? I'm looking at their workshop right now. Sorry, I should be looking around on the Lazy River. Um, okay, they did a Tiki Cheeky Coaster. They must have been inspired by Project Planko. And they weren't chosen to do the Tiki Coaster, so they made one themselves? Oh my god, we're gonna have to do a coaster spotlight of this. Okay, I'm hitting subscribe to that. That's on my to-do list. Uh, Mr. Vanderpants. I just, uh, oh, they did, um, a Kirby building coaster for Zephyr's Memorial Park. Just before this park was built. Um, I just tried to, oh, they did the, uh, Le Vincep. They participated in the contest for our bakery for our World's Fair of the park as well. Very, very active builder, a legend builder in this community. Um, I'm seeing a lot of the buildings that you see in this park, like that one there. A lot of these buildings are actually on their workshop. So if you want to like build a park that looks like this, like they have the Adventure ATM, the Adventure Sugary Emporium, the Gelato, the Small Food Store, uh, all these different buildings, a Duna Mall, a Pip Shop Juice Bar. I don't even know if half this stuff is in this park, but um, it could be. That's what I'm suspecting it is. So I love that. Like, as they're constructing this park here, they are building things and going, I'm going to upload this as a blueprint to share with the community. They're not like, you know, they're they're stepping it up a little bit by going, okay, this is all for my grand project, but I'm going to share it as well. The Rattlesnake Coaster, I, I recognize, I believe we did a park spotlight on that. The Heia Sushi Hangout, which we did for a shop contest not so long ago, or a long time ago, actually. Um, Icarus is a coaster we've spotlighted, so yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very familiar with the things Mr. Vanderpants has built over the years. and uh, But this is probably their first and only big park project. So yes, their creations date back to, let's see here, 2016. Since the inception, since the game came out, Mr. Vanderpants has been a part of this community building stuff. As far as I could tell, I haven't featured a park from them. And I remember, as I was picking this one out, I went, oh wow, this park looks amazing. But I remember, like, I know Mr. Vanderpants is a, a very familiar name in this community, but I remember thinking to myself, I don't remember, like, I'm not familiar with their parks. You know, you have certain people who just bang out parks. Um, the the Pixel Wes's, the uh, uh, MKP's, the Nimzels, um, Rai Rai, you know, different names like that that come to mind. It's like, oh, it's another park from so-and-so. And I was like, Mr. Vanderpants, I don't feel is in that category. But now I wish they become one of the people in that said category. I want to see another mass mis Mr. Vanderpants park. I am losing my pants <laughs> with this park. Um, I don't even know what that means. Don't, don't take it too seriously, guys. Uh <laughs> Uh, let's go to the ride list. Make sure we didn't forget anything. Ladies and gentlemen, we missed something. <laughs> the experience is not over yet. I wouldn't have guessed it, but apparently there's a ride inside of this giant building here. I just thought this was part of the Main Street Plaza area, but if we poke on in here, I don't even know how to get in. Is this it? I feel like that's an exit, right? Somewhere in this building. Aha. Uh, Patisserie? Patiracy. I can't say it. I'm not even try. Wow. Look at this. Oh, pastries is probably what it said, right? Pastries. And, uh... You get to pass by in the queue a little kitchen where they're making all the pastries. And then we have a, a cookie r ceiling there. And... Our final attraction of the day, a log flume inside a building, an interior log flume. I guess this is supposed to be like a chocolate. We're doing like a Willy Wonka style tour here to finish things off. That is quite awesome. Let's uh, get on the right log here.
All right, this one appears to be leaving the station. What uh, is generally the best way to ride these is if we do the pop-up, look forward, and we're just a little bit above the guest here. Uh, we got the uh, trucks loading up the pastries to take around the park. Definitely giving me some kind of crazy Willy Wonka vibes here. Is this door gonna open? Oh, the lights are gonna turn off. I guess the door did open. Or we just smacked into a wall and uh, it's game over. Roll the credits, please. Is this intended to be a ride? What, what's happening here? Whoa! Yo! This is zany. Oh my god! Look at the big fist pumps! They're gonna crush and... <laughs> They're stamping, cutting out the cookie shapes. That's incredible. I've never ever seen anyone use those that way before. I love seeing new stuff, new ideas. This is crazy! Definitely giving me Willy Wonka vibes. I love this. Like I said earlier in the video, guys, this kind of reminds me of, like, Disney Plus. <laughs> Not the, uh, subscription. It's like... Yeah, I don't know. It's just... Something about it is, like, very thematic, like you'd expect from a Disney park. But just elevated. I love it. Absolutely incredible. Like, I think Mr. Vanderpants is capable of doing a very accurate and amazing Disney recreation park. But I'm actually glad that this is not, like, a Disney park. It's something... It's Luna Lake. It's something of their own creativity. Time and time again, we've seen so many Disney recreation parks where it's like, okay, like... What here is... It's hard to make them stand out from another because you're doing what Disney does. Even if you do it well, it's kind of not ever your own, if that makes sense. Whereas everything here feels like their own. It's phenomenal. Good one to end it off on. A fun... extra... Uh, interesting choice to do a log flume, but also a fun one, you know? It's great because you have, uh, it's like a dark ride made out of a log flume that you can't even tell that it's there from the exterior. In fact, I missed it. I had to go to the ride list. It's completely hidden in here. I guess I should have suspected there's something in here, but I didn't really quite know how big this building was um, when we entered from this angle, right? I came around it this way. It looked like a facade. I had no idea how large this building was. Uh, wow. Look at this park, you guys. It's captivating. Everywhere you look, it's like, well, that looks really cool. Um, especially just, I think the, the biggest point to take from this all is the color palette. It's, it's got, it's kind of pastel-y, but there's a lot of bold colors. It's very vibrant, very saturated. And as I said, that Mr. Vanderpants was not afraid to use colors in a very bold way. And I think it just pops. Everything about it just screams to me, wow, this is incredible. And what a treat, what a joy. Like I said, it, it's not one of these end-to-end -end mega parks. You can see the borders here, right? And we've seen parks go to that edge, all the way to this edge, and all the way back to this edge, right? It's not filling that space all the way. And then those are the parks that run at like 10 FPS, even on this current rig that I'm using here. It's much more contained, but it's a, a quality over quantity, but there was still a lot of quantity. I'm looking at my recording uh, before editing. It says 123. So over an hour long experience of just pure uh, ooing and aahing, right? The coasters were 
phenomenal. The dark rides, the track rides, everything about them were great. I can't find a single fault in this park other than me wanting more, but that is a compliment, not a fault. Definitely. It's like, wow, I don't want this experience to end. And now Mr. Vanderpants is one to watch out for. Uh, as they did just finish this park a few months ago, um, based off of looking at their workshop, I don't think I've actually featured a park from them. I could be wrong. Maybe a mini park or something. I'm not entirely sure. So based off this and Mr. Vanderpants uh, being a legend in this community throughout their other creations, their coasters, their blueprints and all that stuff, you, you have now elevated yourself into what I call like the legendary park builder rank. I almost feel like we need a new rank for just that alone. That would actually be kind of sick, right? Something to discern the legend builders that are just good at building stuff from those that make the epic large scale things that take like years to make, months to years. Um, Mr. Vanderpants has now entered that kind of exclusive club that I have in my head of names that I recognize and go, oh, that this is going to be a, an immediate feature, an amazing, immediate, Im incredible experience just based off the name alone. So the next time this name shows up in my inbox, it's like, boom, let's go. We're going. Um, this is up there with the best theme parks I have ever seen. And uh, even further so, just like the, like I said, the what you do with your color palette. I tend to, uh, I, I recognize color theory when it's done well. I did study color theory in art school uh, many, many years ago. And... You know, I I might not be the best at choosing colors and where to use them, but I consider myself like at least intermediate, if not advanced. And it's like what I see here, I, I just blows my mind in terms of color theory design. It's like I, it's it, it's unfathomably good. And I was just like, wow, Mr. Vanderpants has an eye for details, an eye for design. And this park just speaks for itself. You don't need to know anything about color design theme park design, you know, um, directional forces and vistas and compositions to know that, wow, this looks cool, right? <laughs> just everywhere you look, it's just amazing. So yeah, theme park elevated. That's that's kind of where I'm taking this from. Can't find a fault here. Pathwork was great. Tr uh, flat rides were great. Coasters. There's nothing to fault here. This is a five out of five, perfect, uh, you know, five star stamp of approval type theme park here. And definitely the one to beat for 2024. This, even though it was finished at the end of 2023, it was featured in 2024. So here on the channel, for me, this is the, the bar setter. Can anyone do better than this? Is anybody inspired by this to uh, tackle this? So, I mean, give it up for Mr. Vanderpants, everybody. Outstanding theme park. And I just can't wait to see another creation from them uh, at this level and see what else they can do but it probably be a long wait because these things take a very, very long time to do. Um, favorite area, favorite theme, and why favorite coaster? I usually like to uh, ask myself that as well as ask you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. What was your favorite aspect of this park? Right of the kicker, I have to say for me, it was this entrance, Luna Lake, these cherry pinks, this beautiful open plaza beautiful entranceway and a just a stunning ferris wheel behind it Im impeccable foliage this is a uh just in stunning, stunning stuff. And it's all right there on the lake side, Luna Lake, right? It's all in the name. You, it's, it feels very direct. You knew what you were doing and it calls to me. So this is my favorite area, even though it like doesn't really have a theme. The theme is the Luna Lake kind of logo and entrance plaza area, Main Street. Um, just kind of sticking to this uh, certain European building design, I guess, and color palette. I think it's just clean, very, very clean. Now, favorite coaster or ride and why hmm i'm gonna go with this intamin blitz launched coaster style uh i just really like the way that it is like the the fallen ancient viking i don't know godly structures these little pieces here and there like some something from the past left behind but also just the incredible incorporation of the terrain work i really liked the uh the pass throughs some really cool shots in here the rock work the garden work everything about it just these ruined temple pieces it looks really really cool and it's like nothing i've ever seen before usually when we get this temple -y stuff it's very adventure and 
you know, clay temple or Egyptian temple. And I think this is done in a unique way that makes it stand out from anything I've seen before. And the actual Viking aesthetics of everything is just really nice, really bold. The teal colors pop. It's a complete package for me. And the coaster layout and design was uh, really, really nice. So that'll be my favorite for those reasons. What was yours, guys? I also really love this one. The integration of this was pretty badass with the big splash on moment as well. So, I mean, all of them were S tier for sure. And um, I loved it. The shooting ride was super impressive as well as the go-karts. I mean, I'm just kind of saying let's go through them one by one and talk about why they were all impressive <laughs> let's just redo the episode guys start from the beginning <laughs> and experience it once again oh my goodness that was a great experience thank you mr vanderpants for sharing this wonderful creation thank you for making this creation and sharing it with this wonderful community if you guys enjoyed this video please do leave a comment leave a like share it on social media helps the uh, engagement helps this channel grow helps the builders get more attention to their creation they worked on these things for months if not years and the more people that look at their creations and comment on their creations gives them a sense of accomplishment so help give mr vanderpants a sense of accomplishment and leave some kind words down in the comments below if you have any questions for myself or any comments like that uh, i will also be reading comments or i try to and uh definitely uh check them out so uh, i'll try to give as much engagement with you guys in the comments down below as possible so there you guys go that was luna like thank you so much for watching and i hope you help all have a absolutely wonderful day and i'll see you all in the next park spotlight bye now